to today's uh, lesson. I'll be taking you through uh, management information uh, systems in travel and tourism uh, management, BHT 3103. And uh, just to introduce ourselves uh, to this whole aspect of MIS, I will be briefly calling it MIS. Uh, it is important for us to understand that we live in an information age. If there is a time when the need for information was paramount, it's today. And uh, we cannot run away from that fact. It is truly an information age, whether for the millennial or even for the old guards, as we say. All of us, in one way or the other, uh, we are integrated within that information age, and the business are not exceptional. Therefore, uh, for a business to survive and compete effectively uh, without embracing information technology, uh, it's a tall order. So it is of essence for us to know uh, that uh, in the area of uh, tourism, uh, the industry is labor intensive and it generates a lot of information. And the tourism industry needs up to date information. Think about a tourist who wants to go for a holiday, all the way maybe from uh, UK, they want to visit a destination, Kenya, and they don't even know much about Kenya. The obvious thing is for them to search information about that destination and even know the kind of product that are on offer among other necessities uh, that, uh, that, that make up uh, the holiday package. Uh, so tourism is a vast industry. Year in, year out, day in, day out, we generate a lot of information. And this information can come in the form of reports. And for a manager to be able to make uh, effective planning and even management, then they need to understand how a management information system works within the industry. So the whole paradigm about MIS is just to help us uh, to understand uh, the value of information in the hand of a manager. And the bottom line is, the MIS itself will not make a decision. And I always uh, say that the main purpose of MIS within our industry is to help a manager uh, to make sound decision. So the MIS will not make a decision, but the manager, destination manager, can use that information to make strategic decisions uh, to propel the industry forward. So the value of information is directly uh, re related to uh, decision uh, making. It is important for us to know that there are different sources of information. Namely, we can have internal you know, the kind of information that is generated within. For example, if I am a destination manager, I need to know uh, the intricate details in regard to the performance of the firm or the organization that I'm heading, be it the sales uh, reports or sales record or any other kind of trend that I may want to know within the organization. So that information we call it, or that source is internal source. There is also another source, the external, which is beyond the boundaries of an organization, and in one way or the other, it will still affect the day-to-day -day operation and management of a tour firm or even a tourism-related organization. For instance, an external uh, information about the environment 
may be dealing with intelligence, gathering about the competitor's activities. So you compare yourself uh, with the competitors and see how you can uh, you know, uh, pursue or position your product or po position uh, the kind of uh, services that you are offering. There is also information about population uh, shift in terms of consumer uh, behavior or the consumption patterns. You may want to know that. And uh, when you get data uh, from external sources, in most cases, it will capture that. For instance, year in, year out, we always have uh, reports from uh, the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics. And when you look at the way they analyze information in regard to tourism patterns, uh, they capture a lot of, of information about the type of holiday makers that we receive as a country. Then you may also want to look at the economic and social factors or even uh, government uh, registration. So, uh, in nutshell, we are saying the role of MIS is to convert data into information which will help uh, a manager to make effective uh, decisions. Now, I want us to look at the process of transforming data into information. When you talk about data, you know, we look at it as, a, as an input. Data, these are low facts. They have not been processed. So a DMO or a destination uh, uh, manager uh, cannot uh, make decisions from a data. But when that data is processed, you know, through selecting, organizing, and manipulating, then you get information. So we make decision out of, or we make decision out of information that has been processed. And that process is called a uh, transformation of data into information. So from this aspect then, we can have a report. You know, uh, at the end of the day, uh, the, the manager, an effective manager will want to know how did I perform yesterday. And this will help him to make the right decision in terms of planning and any other uh, decision that he may want to carry forth. So it is important for us to know that the main role of MIS is to help us in conversion of data into information. And uh, that is uh, very important. Then what are the characteristics of uh, variable information? We are calling it variable information because we have already said that is the kind of information that you use to make decision. You don't just make decisions from the Bruce but you can even use historical uh, reports uh, to project or do what we call forecasting in terms of uh, the way maybe the organization is going. So one of the characteristics of variable information is accurate. It should be accurate. I have not spent a lot of time there. These are self-explanatory. Then number two, it should be complete. You don't want partial information. Number three, it should be economical in terms of the cost of, pro, you know, the, the way you want to uh, maybe generate that information. The cost element should be substantial. Then uh, flexible, uh, it should also be reliable. You can rely on it, you know, it should be depended on. It should also be relevant. These are characteristics of variable information. It should also be simple. You don't want to have overly complex information. You know, you scratch your hand and you cannot even get uh, what that information is all about. So if I'm looking at some reports, I would want to have a simplified kind of a report so that I can make quick decisions. We are called managers because we are able to make decisions uh, promptly. Then it should also be timely. You don't want something that is uh, long overdue. Uh, you know, being relied on. Then it should also be verifiable, the source, whether internal or external. Then accessible, it should be accessible to the light users. And then it should also be uh, secure from unauthorized users. Uh, would want us to move on and look at the definition of MIS, because we are just breaking the ground and we have understood a uh, few things here and there. 
So what is this uh, thing called MIS or this concept called MIS? And MIS is an organized information and documentation service that systematically correct, stores, process, analyze, report, and disseminate information and data. So in other words, we are talking about a system that has been uh, systematically uh, put in place and it's able to correct and store, process, and analyze uh, reports. And once those reports have been analyzed, it can be used uh, for uh, the light decision. Secondly, we can also uh, define it as a computerized record keeping system that provides the information necessary to manage an organization effectively. We live in information era, that is what we have just said. So, uh, serious organizations have already moved away from the, you know, the analog or what we call the manual systems into computerized uh, systems. In other words, automation of uh, processes within an organization is of, of, of paramount important. So uh, we define MIS as a computerized record keeping system. You'd also want to retrieve information. You'd also want to retrieve uh, uh, the, 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 the kind of uh, inf uh, uh, reports that have been generated. And I always give this example. Think about uh, Mount Kenya University and the number of students that we have. What would happen if all the data is kept in files, you know, and we fail to automate our systems. I think it will be too tedious, even for the service or for people working in different sections uh, to pull out information when it is needed. But in a click of a button, we have automated our systems, and uh, you can access information anywhere, and you know, var various information or diverse information, be it uh, student reports or even the uh, fee status and all those kind of things. So uh, MIS is part and parcel of our life today, and it comes to easing uh, the burden in terms of the way we capture information, the way we collect information, the way we retrieve information, and all that. And now that tourism is, a, is, a, is the fastest growing industry in the world, it cannot lag behind as a result of uh, that kind of advancement. Then MIS involves three primary resources. So whatever we are talking about MIS, uh, technology must be there, information, and people. And these are the three resources that we'll be uh, looking at as we advance. So what is the purpose of MIS? As I had already noted, the main purpose of MIS is to help us or support uh, managers in decision making. So you'd want to have, you know, a more organized uh, reports uh, for easy decision making, and that's the purpose of MIS. You'd also want to understand the sales analysis or the cost trends uh, that are happening within an organization. So through MIS, uh, we provide information in the form of pre-specified reports that display uh, support to the business uh, decision making. Uh, the characteristics of uh, an effective MIS, because we are not only interested with an MIS, but we are looking at an effective MIS. Number one, we are talking about the level of accuracy should be high. Then number two, consistent. We do not want to have haphazard kind of uh, MIS uh, that is being uh, entrenched in an organization. It should also be objective. In other words, you know, it should capture specific uh, information that is required, and it should also be complete. Now, within the tourism uh, corridor, there is what we call the tourism corridor uh, strategy element. And this one, I got it from the NTB, the National Tourism Blueprint 2030. And uh, when you look at this, and this, and the middle here we have integration and coordination. And what are we coordinating? We are talking about uh, tourist information systems, which captures uh, what we call the tourist profile. And this is 
part of the MIS that uh, we are talking about. You'd want to get more information about the kind of clientele uh, that you attract, you attract as, a, as a destination. And beside that, we also have other integration in the area of transport modes. You know, we have uh, ICT connectivity, connecting the city centers, and all that. But my interest is mostly here, the kind of tourist information uh, systems uh, that we adapt. And we will be looking at that. Like when we talk about CLS, what is the main purpose of CLS in terms of booking, airline, and even the hotel uh, uh, reservations? Then, what is the importance of MIS in, t in the tourism industry? So one would ask that uh, important question. Why do we need MIS within the travel, the wider travel and tourism industry? Number one is that uh, it enables tourism organization as to strengthen themselves and address weaknesses or address uh, weak areas in regard to revenue report, employee performance, sales report, etc. So when you are using uh, MIS, one can easily generate information and uh, you know, it strengthens uh, the way the organization is being learned. Number two, uh, the availability of strategic uh, reports uh, help uh, the tourism organization to tap opportunities at what we call the real time. So that strategic report that you have on the desk uh, or that information that you have uh, being generated by the MIS can help you uh, to make decision, what we call the real time. Then uh, properly uh, generated reports will also help the management to identify uh, emerging challenges and know how to tackle them. So MIS will help us in generating reports and uh, the, uh, we can easily know how to go about it in terms of uh, curbing uh, or tackling the challenges. Number four, it maximizes the benefit of the opportunity coming from the external environment and minimize the effect, the effect of the harmful event, e e event. So in this aspect, we are saying uh, that uh, the MIS will help us to understand more about the external environment. And, uh, you know, like today we are saying, uh, with this pandemic, the uh, COVID-19, you know, uh, the travel industry has been halted. And, uh, you know, what now we need to do is to sit down and come up with the strategies. And uh, we can learn even from, you know, uh, the best uh, companies on how they are navigating their way out of this pandemic within the arena of tourism. And learn a lesson, learn one or two lessons, and be able to uh, plan effectively, uh, you know, on how to bounce back. Then number five, uh, it gives a big picture of the company and act of as a communication and planning tool. So the MIS uh, reports that are generated will help us, you know, to uh, rearrange or, you know, tell the whole world who we are and what we do. Think about the international tour firms like TUI in German and, you know, the way it is uh, renowned or even the renowned airlines uh, like uh, uh, the Emirates, you know, we want to learn from them on how they have adopted technology uh, in the uh, reservation and all that. Uh, it also helps us to eliminate delays and ineffectiveness in handling uh, customers' uh, issues or, you know, understanding our customer. So when uh, we have up-to-date information, then it means that we are able to know the preferences, the taste and the likes of the customer. It also helps us to ensure effective management of customer data. And I want to reiterate again that uh, when we have effective management data tool, it is so important because we always say in marketing that you don't sell your product to everyone, but you come up, you come up with a way of segmenting the kind of clientele that you want to capture. So when we use or when we rearrange on MIS, then we are saying that we will be able to 
uh, effectively manage customers' data, uh, like uh, what they prefer, and even maybe the mode of transport, you know, the kind of uh, activities that they want to engage themselves in, etc. Then it also helps us in strategic planning, management, control, operation, and transition processing. So in essence, we are seeing that MIS helps in the day-to-day -day operation and management of uh, tourism-related uh, uh, business. And it also helps uh, the junior managers uh, with uh, operational data for planning and uh, decision-making. So everyone in an organization or every employee in an organization, irrespective of the level of management that they are in, they need up-to-date information to make uh, the right decision. And it also play uh, an important role in terms of administration and operation of the global tourism organization. Now, uh, the next thing that I want us to discuss is uh, classification of information. And uh, we are seeing uh, uh, manager will interact with vast information. And the first classification is what we call action versus non-action. And this means that there is an informational report a manager will get that will prompt them to take an action. The other sort of information that he will get just to inform him. He might not need to take a radical decision, and we call it no action information. Then we also have what we call recurring versus non-recurring information. You know, uh, recurring means it's something that is can you know it's uh, it's coming or being generated every now and then, and the non-recurring means that you can be getting it uh, once you need it. You you know it's not regular like the recurring. So once you need specific information, you just request for it. And then we also have what we call internal versus inter external information. The internal is the one that deals with the uh, operation and management of an organization on a daily basis, while the external information uh, emanates from other quarters away from the organization. And that can also help you uh, in, in the management of any given organization. We always say that uh, the travel business does not operate in isolation. So you cannot ignore uh, the external sources, sources of information. Uh, then uh, we have uh, uh, the, the manager and their function. Uh, and uh, we know one of the function of a manager is planning. Then we also talk about organizing, uh, coordinating, uh, decision making, controlling. And all these functions are aimed at this, that the MIS must be designed to support managers in as many as of these functions as possible uh, at different levels, whether it's at the operational level, tactical levels, or strategic level. So the manager uh, make all sort of decisions and their functions are diverse and uh, the MIS assist in doing that. Then we look at the level of management decision making. We have talked about decision again and again. And we have simply said that MIS support decision making. Now, these decisions are made at different levels. The first level, you know, uh, at the apex, we have what we call strategic ma ma management decisions. And these are the top uh, not, uh, persons within an organization. We're talking about the uh, general manager, uh, the CEOs, the, uh, within this level. So they make uh, decisions, and uh, these decisions help in the learning or in the management of an organization. So their main function is to develop the overall organizational goals, uh, strategies, uh, policies, and objectives. So strategies are developed by the top management, or what we call strategic management, and MIS help in such. Then we have the middle level, or what we call the mid uh, uh, level management or tactical management, and uh, these are the you know uh, the 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 assistant directors or even uh, uh, division uh, uh, managers or branch managers, and their work is to simplify 
or try to interpret these strategic decisions that are that have been made at this level and then uh you know break them down uh, into subunits uh, for the company in other words they are the people who try now to interplay the, the decisions that have already been made at this level then down there we have the operational uh, management uh, decision making and uh, these are the lower candle uh, managers who ensure the implementation of the decision that have been uh, made uh, by the other two uh, levels. So all these levels uh, still need uh, MIS uh, reports and information to make the right decision. Now, coming a bit home uh, or closer, we are talking about the application of the information system in the tourism and leisure uh, sector. And uh, one of the areas that we have used information system effectively is uh, you know the CLS and GDS which are so obvious within our industry like the Amandea, Samba and Gadileo you know they are used extensively for booking and reservation and uh, the CLS and the G G GDS have changed the narrative of you know the reservation and booking then number two, we also use uh, the, the second uh, application is the global computer network, where we are saying that we use a uh, uh, computer uh, to search information and uh, help us in making the right decision and also communication. Then we also have uh, satellite navigation systems. Uh, this one, we always use it uh, for the space equipment, and it can help us uh, to detect or locate uh, various objects and uh, uh, movement parameters like the way we use uh, this within uh, the space or even the water bodies like the cruise uh, we use the satellite navigation system then we also have uh, uh, telephone networks and uh, uh, this is a, a system of telephone exchange and communication nodes that provide uh, telephone co uh, communication uh, to uh, or within the industry. Then we also have what we call uh, EPS or electronic uh, payment system. That one is used widely uh, to make payments like we have what we call EasyPay or iPay or even web money transfer. Like even in the hotel industry we have what we call the EPOS, you know, just get in and uh, you know uh, uh, the, the electronic uh, point of sale and it is used extensively uh, for uh, making payment. Then we also have electronic document flow systems where we want to monitor uh, the flow of uh, documents within an organization and we use an application uh, to do that. Then we also have what we call the e-business or what we call electronic business and this has been used extensively especially uh, through uh, the modern uh, internet technology and uh, it is uh, an area that is growing very fast. Then we also have office application systems whereby we have uh, uh, softwares uh, that are used especially within uh, the business arena whether Excel or even uh, the Word and all that. And number nine, we have the legal information systems uh, that relies mostly on legal information uh, storage and it helps in uh, effective decision making and uh, analysis of any kind of information uh, that may have uh, attached on uh, legal matters. Then we also have uh, multimedia systems, uh, which, which is a, a creation of electronic directories, directories, uh, catalogs or museums and tourist guides, you know, which is available for users like, uh, you know, tourists. You want to learn more about or you want to know more about a particular destination, then you can use what we call more the multimedia system and you can access a lot of information through these uh, directories or analog. Then we also have uh, GIS, or what we call Geographical Information System, which provides spatial information uh, for uh, travelers. Sorry. 
Uh, the last bit that I want us to look at is uh, what we call system development cycle. And uh, when you look at system development cycle, we are asking ourselves, when you are developing an MIS, what does it involve? And essentially, it involves five uh, levels or five phases. We have what we call the feasibility study, legal requirement, design, development, and implementation. And so the first level is a feasibility study, which involves, you know, you want to understand uh, the current problem. You know, you are providing an MIS solution. And then before you give the solution, then you want to understand the nature of the problem. And under that category, then we do what we call feasibility study. You want to know in depth the problem at hand and also provide uh, a way out. So under that, we do what we call technical feasibility. You want to ask yourself, if I come up with this MIS uh, solution, uh, do we have that kind of technology within our country? Or will I need uh, technical people and are they available? Or do you, are you going to rely with expatriates? So then we have economical or economic feasibility, the cost element, you have to look at that. Legal feasibility, whatever you are doing, is it within the parameters of the government? Is it jeopardizing or is it against uh, the law or, 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 or the, the, you know, uh, the, the different uh, uh, legal systems that have been put in place by the government? or the operational feasibility. Do you have staffs who can do that? Or do you need to do an overhaul change? Then after you have done that, remember you're looking at uh, the system development life cycle. The second phase is what we call requirement analysis. In, the, in this level, you're just about trying to understand or dig deeper and uh, you know, gather details about uh, the current system. Why, like now, if you want to migrate from this kind of a system to a new one why are you doing away with the current one is it that it's not addressing the issues that you felt you need to address so you try to give more details about uh, the current system and what you need in order to develop uh, the, uh, the the proposed system you may need to do interview you know you interview staff or uh, you want to examine the current business or even sending questionnaires and uh, different kind of, uh, or you can even uh, uh, deploy other parameters. Then the second phase is what we call the system uh, design. And under this uh, system design, you are looking at all the aspects from hardware, software, output, input, the user interface, the module designs, the test plan, the conversion plan, and documentation. So this is the actual place where now you design the system. And in our industry, of course, you, can, you might not develop this, but you contact or you get uh, other expatriates, like system developers, uh, to develop a system for you uh, to fit within your tour firm and all that. Then uh, the fourth uh, phase is what you call system development, where now you do the actual development of the software, coding and testing, and lastly, number five, you do what we call implementation. You want to impre implement uh, the new MIS solution that you have developed. And how do you implement it? When you are implementing it, you can do four different methods. So if you are implementing an MIS solution, uh, you can do what we call direct changeover. In other words, you stop using the old system today, and tomorrow you start using a new one. So it has its pros and cons. Or you can do what we call parallel conversion. You use the two systems for some time, the old and the new system alongside for a few weeks or a few months uh, so that uh, you can know how to go about it or areas to improve. Or you can also do what we call phases. You implement in phases, phase one, phase two, phase three, uh, stepwise. Yeah? Or you can even do what we call pilot uh, conversion. Pilot conversion simply means that uh, you can take uh, like uh, one section, you know, in an institution like MKU can, you know, take maybe one department from every school and then you do what we call pilot testing with those departments. Then once it works, then you, uh, you can now uh, replicate it into all other departments and uh, then uh, use it. 
The last thing is uh, what we are doing or what the Ministry of Tourism is doing in this country. Uh, we have noted that you cannot fail to adopt uh, the MIS systems and uh, the National Tourism Blueprint has pointed out some areas that we feel uh, that we'll be using MIS and also uh, uh, the integrated information systems. And if you look at this, this is what we had suggested. This document was prepared in 2017. So by 2018, we had talked about storage for all. You know, you are able to come up with MIS that can store uh, the light information. Uh -huh. Then in 2021, we were very ambitious. We talked about using robots and services uh, within our industry. Now, uh, in 2022, we are intending to do what we call the wearable uh, internet or the 3D uh, printing, you know. Then in 2023, implementable technology. And 2025, uh, we are talking about, uh, you know, uh, uh, using... Uh, 3D printing human health and such like things. But our interest is how we use uh, technology uh, to market tourism products and uh, also uh, to manage the operations uh, within our, our tour business. So that marks the end of our lesson and I hope uh, we have learned uh, something about the way we use MIS uh, within the travel industry, and uh, it's my, it has been my joy uh, to talk about uh, the way uh, we use MIS uh, in strategic decision uh, support. In other words, we have said that we use MIS to support decision making because uh, tourism business generates a lot of information, and that information cannot just be ignored. It needs to be harnessed, it needs to be stored, it needs to uh, be processed into reports and that report can be retrieved later even for uh, other uses. Thank you. These televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then, email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.